In the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean, where the horizon seems to stretch endlessly, an incredible story of survival unfolded. This is the remarkable tale of Jose Salvador Alvar Enga, a man who defied all odds and survived an astonishing 438 days adrift at sea. Jose Alvar Enga, a fisherman from El Salvador, set sail on a routine fishing trip in November 2012. Little did he know that this journey would become a test of his strength, resilience, and will to survive. Armed with just a few basic supplies and an empty ice chest, Jose embarked on what would become the most challenging and harrowing experience of his life. Battling treacherous storms, relentless waves, and scorching heat, Jose found himself at the mercy of the unpredictable ocean. With no means of communication and no way to navigate, he was completely alone. Jose ingeniously transformed his small fishing boat into a survival shelter. He used plastic sheets to protect himself from the elements and collected rainwater to quench his thirst. Fishing became his lifeline. Jose relied on his fishing skills to catch whatever he could, sustaining himself with raw fish and seabirds that landed on his boat. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and Jose's determination to survive never wavered. He clung on to hope, dreaming of the day he would be reunited with his loved ones. And then, on February 2014, After 438 days adrift, Jose's incredible story took a turn. He was finally spotted by a passing fishing vessel near the Marshall Islands. Jose's rescue was a moment of pure joy and relief. He was brought back to civilization, where he received the medical care and support he desperately needed. Jose Alvar Enga had plenty of experience as a fisherman, knowing the sea inside and out from years of commercial fishing. However, not even the most seasoned fishermen can withstand the power of a tropical storm, especially when stuck in a 15-foot skiff without any means of steering, no food, and a completely inexperienced fishing partner. In late 2012, that's precisely where Alvar Inga ended up, and precisely where he remained for the following 438 days. Jose Alvar Inga's fishing expedition was cursed from the very start. His intention was to embark on a 30-hour deep-sea fishing adventure, with the hopes of catching sharks, marlins, and sailfish. These three species were known to fetch a handsome price, and if he managed to catch a good number of them, he would be rewarded handsomely. In the bustling fishing village of Costa Azul, Mexico, the competition was fierce, and Alvar Inga was determined to return with an awe-inspiring catch. Unfortunately, his usual fishing buddy, another experienced fisherman who worked for his boss Vilarmino Rodriguez, bailed out at the last minute. Ovar Inga wasn't a concern, though, and decided to bring along a different fisherman from Rodriguez's company, a young man named as Equio Cordoba. Despite never having worked with Cordoba before, Ovar Inga believed he was up for the task. It was only going to be a short trip, lasting just over a day, and they would be staying relatively close to shore. On November 17th, the two of them embarked on a 24-foot fiberglass skiff equipped with a small motor. They had all the necessary fishing gear, a portable radio, and a large ice box for storing their catch. The trip started off promising, with the duo quickly catching over 1,000 pounds of fish, almost filling up their ice box. After a few hours of sailing, a fierce storm hit and it lasted for a whole five days. 
Jose Alvarenga and Cordoba tried their best to steer the boat towards the shore, but the heavy rain made it impossible to see where the shore actually was. To make matters worse, their boat was weighed down by the fish they had caught. In order to make maneuvering easier, they had no choice but to dump their precious catch. They relied mostly on the rainwater that poured from the sky and the limited amount of food they had brought with them to survive. When the storm finally subsided, the men were able to assess the extent of the damage. Their motor was completely gone, the fishing gear was either lost or damaged, and most of their portable electronics were also in bad shape. Alvar Enga managed to send a distress signal to Rodriguez using the backup battery of the two-way radio. But unfortunately, it died before they could establish their exact location. Alvar Enga and Cordoba found themselves stranded with only a few basic supplies, no radio, and no motor. Despite hoping for rescue after sending a message to Rodriguez, they knew there were no guarantees. While Cordoba was not very helpful due to his lack of experience, Alvar Inga managed to catch fish, turtles, jellyfish, and seabirds with his bare hands. They survived by collecting rainwater and drinking a mixture of turtle blood and their own urine. As days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, they lost hope of being rescued and relied on the chance of being spotted by passing planes or drifting into a shipping lane. However, without any means of navigation, the possibility of being seen was slowly fading away. Jose Salvador Alvar Inga found ways to occupy himself and mark the passing of time by observing the moon's phases. Having grown up on the water and spent most of his life at sea, he was accustomed to a diet of seafood, relying on the sun and moon and the salty sea air. On the other hand, Ezequiel Cordoba struggled with these challenges. By the fourth month, Cordoba was mentally and physically exhausted. His body was starting to show the toll of life adrift at sea, and he fell ill from consuming raw fish, birds, and turtles. After falling ill, he lost his appetite and eventually starved to death. For six days following his Equiel Cordoba's passing, Jose Alvar Enga refrained from touching his body. Left to his own devices, for the first time in almost six months, he considered ending his own life. Eventually, he laid Cordoba to rest and, with a newfound sense of hope, motivated himself to keep going. After marking the 15th lunar cycle and enduring more than 400 days adrift at sea, Alvar Inga finally caught sight of what he had been yearning for for over a year. Solid ground! His weathered skiff had floated southward, arriving at a secluded corner of the Marshall Islands, approximately 6,000 miles away from his initial departure point. After abandoning his craft and swimming to shore, he made his way to a small beach house and knocked on the door. The couple inside couldn't believe what they were hearing and immediately called the authorities. The police were completely taken aback by his story, as they had thought Jose Ovar Enga had died over 11 months ago. Yet. Here he was, alive and surprisingly well given his circumstances. His parents and young daughter, whom he hadn't spoken to in a while, but still had a good relationship with, were overjoyed when they heard the news of his return. Even his boss was thrilled. It turned out that Rodriguez had organized a search party for him, but the storm had made it nearly impossible to find them. By the time the storm had passed, Everyone had assumed that the two fishermen in the small boat were gone for good. Not many people initially believed Jose Alvar Inga's story. Despite his thin appearance, overgrown hair and beard, and weathered skin from the sea and sun, he seemed to healthy, 
to have spent over a year at sea. Surely, being alone with no food or fresh water for that long would have left him emaciated. Doctors even thought he should have had scurvy. Additionally, maritime experts mentioned that sailing in a straight line to reach the Marshall Islands without a steering mechanism or navigation system would have been nearly impossible. However, multiple physicians noted that his oceanic diet, primarily consisting of bird and sea turtle meat, was rich in vitamin C, which could have helped prevent scurvy. The confusion regarding his journey was resolved when a study from the University of Hawaii demonstrated that ocean currents would have guided him straight to the island where he was found. Jose Salvador Alvar Enga was also confronted with a lawsuit upon his return, filed by the family of Ezequiel Cordoba. The lawsuit accused Alvar Enga of not disposing of Cordoba's body at sea, but instead consuming it to survive. His attorney vehemently refuted these allegations, and Alvar Enga even passed a polygraph test to support his innocence. Alvar Enga now resides in El Salvador, situated in a quaint village embraced by vast stretches of land, far away from any water bodies. And that's a wrap, folks. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. Ring the bell to stay updated with our latest uploads. Got any thoughts or questions? Drop me a comment below. We love hearing from you. Check out my other videos for more great content. And remember, stay curious, keep exploring, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and keep shining. Hold on a sec. I am not finished yet. Follow me on social media Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube obviously. Do it now. Come on, do it. Thank you for watching. And a huge shout out to our subscribers and Patreon supporters for making this possible. You're the real MVPs. Signing off, peace out.